Hello and welcome to our service this week um, in which we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. And before we begin our worship, uh, just a notice, particularly to those of you who are local to Bromborough, one or two people haven't realised that the church is open and we are very much open. Services are carrying on 9.15 on a Sunday morning, which is traditional, um, mostly communion, except for the fourth Sunday, and at 11 o'clock, um, where you probably get a live version that's a bit like this service, um, but with some extra things included, not least the experience of being able to be together. We're doing our very best to remain as COVID safe as possible. From next week, you won't have to book in for the 9.15, so you can just turn up. The numbers are relatively low and we know that you can find a safe space. One or two people have said that they get the service, but they don't get my other emails. And I have realised that for one or two people, it goes into your junk email box. So I do encourage you to look there. If you think I haven't been talking to you or communicating with you, I promise that I have. But it may be that because we are emailing large groups of people, um, your email system thinks it's something that it is rubbish. Well, it may be rubbish, but it's rubbish that's relevant to you, I think. So do have a look there um, and keep talking to one another. Use that phone if you can't do it in purpose, in person and let one another know what is happening. Uh, gradually, as time moves forward, we will be starting up the Wednesday morning service at first in church. The Wednesday evening service will remain on Zoom and we're looking to a time when we can record that so that even when we stop doing this, um, there will be something online that you can uh, view and take part in. So let's worship together today. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's pray. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. We're going to sing now a hymn that might have been very new to you last week, Come People of the Risen King, and for that reason we're going to have another go at it. the risen King who delight to bring Him praise. Come all and tune your hearts to sing to the morning star of grace. From the shifting shadows of the earth we will lift our eyes to Him. We're steady arms of mercy reach to gather children in. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice. Whose joy is morning sun And those weeping through the night Come those who tell our battles won And those struggling in the fight For His perfect love will never change And His mercies never cease But follow through all our days with the certain hope of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice. One heart, one voice, O Church of Christ, rejoice.
find the riches of His grace Over all the world His people sing Sure to show we hear them call The truth that cries through every age Our God is all in all Rejoice has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. God of mercy, we turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. Forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sin and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 12. When Peter saw what the people were doing, he said to them, Men of Israel, Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked a murderer to be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that this Christ would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we have our second reading, which Jill is going to read to us today. This morning's reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do they have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. 
and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some years ago, when I was working for the Mother's Union and part of my job was going to give talks to different churches, I was at the church in Bunbury, which is right in the south of our diocese. It almost feels like you're halfway down the country when you get there from the top of the Wirral. So off I went for a meeting, I think, that began at 7.30. And after that meeting, it was about half past nine, ten o'clock, and it was really quite dark, and I had to drive home. Well, out in the countryside around there, I took a couple of wrong turnings. But eventually, with the help of Satnav, or, or I can't remember whether I had it, to be honest, I found myself on the M6. And that felt brilliant because, of course, the M6 was the road I needed to take me back home to the Wirral. M6, M56, M53, and then into Birkenhead, where I was living. And I drove in a very warm car, perhaps listening to music, I don't remember, just feeling like it had been a good evening, but desperate to get home. And time passed, and time passed, and I continued. And in actual fact, I seem to recall that Satnav told me to turn round several times. You idiot, I thought, I'm on the M6. And then I started to see Sison posts for Stafford and Birmingham, and, and still I went on, almost knowing by now that I was going in the wrong direction, but not being quite sure where and how to turn round. In fact, I can, can absolutely remember thinking, if I carry on, I could get to my mum and dad a bit quicker than I can get home now. It wasn't a serious thought, they were down in Devon. But I was frustrated. The road signs hadn't been clear. I couldn't have understood where to go any better than I did. It wasn't really my fault. And now it was late. I eventually, I managed to turn around found myself in the middle of some strange area that I'd never been before, finally got back to the M6 going in the other direction. A phone call came. A friend I house shared with wanted to know where I was. I'm on my way home, I said. I'll get to you about midnight. Oh, what a disaster. I've never forgotten it. And what makes me laugh about myself is my determination to ignore Alice the Satnav and to keep going in spite of all the warnings. That story is one that really reminds me of the ideas of repentance. And repentance is the focus of today's act reading. Up until now, we have been learning and thinking about what it means to live a resurrection life. How we live in the light of Christ, first becoming self-aware that we may be still in the darkness in spite of saying, yes, I believe. And then the things that we might need to do and to think as we move outwards, post-resurrection. Last week, we thought about being one body and one soul and also about as we give the great grace that is poured out upon us. Now, last week, I mentioned uh, in some of the sermons I preached, I don't know whether it was this one or not, because I do each of them independently. But I spoke about the challenge of Acts. Acts is a challenge to us, as well as a great comfort. We learn of God's great grace, but we are also challenged to think about what it means to follow him and the actions that we have to take. In the text that we have had today, uh, Paul is, Peter is speaking about the absolute importance of the Jewish people's need to turn around, to turn back to Christ. He's giving them an opportunity to ask forgiveness for the ultimate sin, the sending of the one who is righteous and blameless to the cross, for asking for the release of a robber, Barabbas, rather than for the release of the innocent, Jesus Christ. They've just watched Peter and John heal a lame man and they think that Peter and John are amazing and yet 
those disciples remind the gathered audience that this work is not being done in their strength, but in the strength of God, the one who saves, the one who came to show them the way. Now, in Jewish tradition, people could be absolved of sins that they didn't know they'd committed, things that they were unaware of. And Peter says to the crowd, you probably didn't know exactly what you were doing in respect of Jesus Christ, though some of you probably did. Nevertheless, what you need to do is to put to one side, ask God's forgiveness for what has happened, for how you treated Jesus, and to take him on. Because if you say, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, the future for you is one of good news, of joy, of hope. This message is as important to us as it was to the disciples of the time. Yes, the grace of God is poured out upon us, but we need to be in a right mind, a right heart and mind, in order to be able to receive that grace. And repentance, turning back to God, is very important. Why? Well, first of all, we need not to live in the past. We need to live looking forward. Many of us can be chained by what has happened. And we see in society all the time people being impacted by the pain of what has happened to them in the past. Now, I'm not for one moment saying that it doesn't have an impact on us, our childhood and our upbringing. But there is also choice. Prince Philip, we know, had an extremely difficult early childhood. He could have spent much of his life saying, well, look what happened to me. Look what happened to my mother. She went into a, an asylum to be cared for because of mental health issues. Look what happened to my dad. He abandoned me and went off to the Riviera with another woman. Look what happened next. I, I lived with my uncle and then he died. Look what happened next and so on and so on. But he didn't. Now, I'm not saying those who struggle with mental health issues and with the impact of, of their past on them are wrong. But I am saying that for most of us, what we actually need to do is to let go of our past, not by just dropping it and uh, ignoring it, but actually acknowledging those things in the past that we've done or that have been done to us and turning away from them deciding that they will not be the direction of our whole life, going on the right path but in the wrong direction is something that I did on the M6. It's something that we can do in our lives. We can say, well, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, I've become a drinker. I've gambled my money. I've ignored Jesus. I've never read my Bible, so why start now? I've always talked about people behind their back. It's one of my weaknesses. The truth, well, I live with the truth, but, you know, one of the things that I sometimes do is embroider it. Any of those things, and perhaps others that I cannot think about in this moment, are things which can hold us back, prevent us from turning around and moving forward. We need to turn back to the future I was never, ever going to get home unless I actively made a decision to come off the motorway, to turn around, to look for the right direction and to get back on admitting that I had made a mistake. And it felt stupid and it still feels stupid even telling all of you about it now. How did I not notice I was going the wrong way? Why did I ignore the sat-nav? Well, I can't really speak about that, except I guess a little bit of me thought that I knew better. And can't we all be like that in life sometimes? Think that we know better. Now, the future ahead of me was a warm bed, was a, a nice hot drink, was a good sleep, rest. When we turn around, it is often painful, changing the habits of a lifetime, changing the thinking that we've been brought up with, that we've always had, owning up to the fact that we may have got something wrong. All of that is hugely difficult. But when we make the effort to do it, 
when we begin to see that what's in front of us is hope and promise. It's better than what we left behind. It leads us nearer to our goals and our calling. Then, then we begin to experience the grace of God. We begin to see the good news, the hope that is set before us, rather than having our backs to it, moving away from God's calling on our life. Repentance is also about something that we do now. We repent, uh, not because of punishment, not because I've said you should, not even because scripture tells us to, though we should listen to scripture. That's essential. But actually we repent because when we do, God is about to do something wonderful. Repent, turn around because God is alive. The kingdom of God is at hand, Mark's gospel reminds us. Jesus says that. If you continue to go your own way, you will miss out. Think of all those wasted minutes that I had on that motorway, going the wrong way, being determined that I knew better, and finally realising that I absolutely didn't, and the situation was only getting worse. Returning to God's ways actually means that we're in tune with him. We're in step with him. And why should we repent? Well, we repent because, as I've said, it takes us nearer to what God has called us to do. It takes us closer to being the best version of ourselves, the version that God wants us to be, created in his image. But repentance is also, and importantly, about the effect that we have on God. When one of my children was little, they did something pretty naughty. I'm not going to embarrass either of them by telling you what it was, but those things happen to children, don't they? And I could have shouted, I probably did, and told them off. But actually what struck them when I found out about what they'd done was how upset I was how really powerfully what they had done wrong had impacted upon me. And I know for a fact they've never ever forgotten that lesson. Not because I got cross, parents do get cross with children, but because they hadn't realised how their misbehaviour, their failure to do right, had had such a deep impact on me. It puzzled them. And that's what we need to think about. Repentance is about reaching our goal, becoming the best version of ourselves. But repentance is needed because when we turn away from God, he cries, he weeps, it pains him. It distresses him to see us turning away from us because he loves us. He loves you so much. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, God wants to do it with you, wants you to turn and face him, wants you to be hand in hand with him because he has a promise of something greater. That promise is hard to see if your life right now is painful or difficult, if you are suffering from illness, mental or physical. But I promise you that the scriptures remind us eternally that when we turn to Christ, he will give us and look after us in the very best way that is possible. So today's message is to repent, to turn back to God, reflect on your life and think about the ways in which you might need to do that. And remember, God receives you with joy as he, the father, received the prodigal son. God loves you. He made you. And this week, and every day, he longs to do things together with you. Amen. We affirm our faith in these words from scripture. Christ died from our sins in accordance with scripture. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received, and this we believe. Amen. 
Ian's now going to lead us in our prayers. Before our intercessions, let us remember before the Lord, those of our friends and family, those in our church and wider community, anyone known to us or known to others, all who are sick, Lord, grant to them your healing touch and all those who have recently departed this life. Lord, grant them eternal rest and support their families with their loss. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. For our intercessions, let us pray for God's creation, which has become so important to us over the past year, but has become so neglected by us. And on a day like today, we can look around. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful. The Lord God made them all. Words that are familiar to us all. So let us pray for all creation contained within the words of this hymn. Lord, all things bright and beautiful, the earth, our countryside, the sky, the seas, the stars at night, the moon, the colours of the world, the colours of the rainbow. All your created world for us to enjoy. We thank you, Lord, and ask you to help us all to be worthy stewards of your creation. All creatures, great and small, the big blue whale, the tiny shrew in the garden, the sheep, cows and livestock in the fields, the chickens that lay our eggs, the birds and animals in the wild world, and the pets in our home that are part of our family. We thank you, Lord, and ask you to help us all to be worthy stewards of your creation. All things wise and wonderful, the people we meet in our lives who have and do inspire and guide us. The wonder of the NHS in protect, providing health care to each and every one of us and to all those helping with the vaccination programme at this time. The wisdom we hope to gain over the years. We thank you Lord and ask you to help us all to be worthy stewards of your creation. Help us to strive daily to appreciate the wonders of your world, whether large or small. The little flower that opens, the little bird that sings, purple-headed mountains, rivers, sunsets, mornings, cold winters, warm summers, rainfall, fruits and vegetables ripening in the gardens, trees, fields, and all our senses to appreciate all that you have created in your world. Certain us, Lord, our hearts, our homes, our church, our nation, our world. Certain us, and never let us slip outside the enchantment of your grace. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the words of the traditional Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And our second hymn, one which is, I'm sure, well known to all of you. Oh, for a thousand tons to sing. Triumphs of the triumphs of 
fears That bids our sorrow cease That bids our sorrow cease Tis music in the sinner's ears Tis life and health Tis and peace that he gave his only son bring you by faith to his eternal life amen may christ who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to the father's will keep you steadfast as you walk with him in the way of his cross amen may the spirit who strengthens us to suffer with christ that we may share his glory set your minds on life and peace Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>